Cheno, what's up guys? How's it going? Today I wanted to talk about A-B testing. Now you've got A, you've got B, but which one of these is better? So in order for us to figure that out, we need to test. And we need a tool which we can do these tests with. Now there's a lot of tools out there already, uh, but all of these are quite expensive and some of them might lack some features. So I found a really nice solution which is based on Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So I wanted to show that to you. Roll the intro! So what is A-B testing? Now the concept is really simple. When you're doing features for a website, you're always making assumptions and guesses as to what will work for your users. But there's also a way of testing out your new feature versus the old one by making an A-B test out of them. So you basically show your variation to 50% of the users and the other 50% will get the original one. And you have this test running until you have enough data and then you can analyze that and see which one actually performed better during that time. So what do you need to get started? Well, the first one is you need a website. The second one is you need Google Analytics and the third one is something called Google Tag Manager. So this video won't go into detail on how to install Google Tag Manager. If you don't already have it installed, you can click here to learn more about that. So this is my company website and we've been thinking of changing the hero element. But before we do that, I'd like to try to do an A-B test to see if it actually has any impact on our users. So I'm going to inspect this element and check the, the classes here. So uh, the the hero is actually called MO Hero. So I already did the styling out of it and they exist on the site. So by adding a class to this, we get the new uh, styling. So by putting here MO Hero slash slash AB test, we get the, the change. But now we actually want to do this change with JavaScript. So I'll refresh the page and uh, start writing some JavaScript. So we want to select the element, so document, get elements by class name all right let's run that code and see what's happened all right exactly what we want uh, we notice also that the monday logo is white so we won't want to check change that at the same time so we'll do almost the same thing with the logo to change the source out of it. Perfect, so that's the A-B test we're now going to do. So now we just have, need to have a tool for us to do it. So the next thing is to do the actual A-B test. We're going to base our A-B test out of the next web's solution. So in this article, they're explaining how they use Google Tag Manager for A-B testing. And I definitely recommend you to read this whole article. It's really good. And they've also been as kind as to put their whole solution on GitHub for us to use. So here's the project, and as you can see, here's the AB testing JS file. Let's just put it in raw so we can copy it. And then we're going to head into Google Tag Manager. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new tag. Click the new button, the tag configuration, and this is actually going to be custom HTML. So the whole script is going to be wrapped into script tags. So you can write those in here, script. Then we take the whole script like this and copy paste it in here. Now this script does quite a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, most of it has to do with writing a cookie and uh, reading the cookie so that the user always get the same variation. Now the part we are going to be focusing on is this part from 50, line 58. So the first thing we're going to change is the prefix. So, so we're gonna name this hero test and we're also going to put our code in here. So this is the code that's gonna be executed for our variation. So let's copy paste that from our website. Let's put it in here like that. And that's it. That You don't need to do any more modifications to this. Next part is to make a trigger. So when is this A-B test going to be fired? So let's create a trigger for that. Let's click here. And as you can see, we don't already have a trigger which will be fired if the user comes to the main page. So we're gonna do one of those. So click the plus sign, let's choose a trigger. So this is actually going to be a page view and it's not gonna be on all pages, but instead only on the main page. So we click the some page views, we put the page path contains and then just slash like that. And then we can name this trigger page view like this. 
so we know which one of it is. Actually, you can't rename it just slash, so we just say main page, page view main page. All right. So now we have a trigger and we can save this whole tag. But first, we of course need to name it. So we're just going to say AB test hero save. So we actually made a mistake on purpose. So now I want to try to, to debug this to see what mistake we made. So from here, you can actually access the preview and debug mode. So let's click on that. And then we are presented with a fault in our code. So it says we don't have the random number vari variable defined. So let's do that. Uh, variables can be found from here. And let's create a new variable. Now this is actually a built-in variable. So we can just click the configure and we should find the random number from here. There it is. So just enable it. And there you go. So let's try to do the preview again and see how it works. Perfect. It works like a charm. So now that we've entered the preview mode, we can actually go to the website to see the actual modification. So let's do that. Refresh the page and see what happens. All right. We have the normal hero over here. But as we're now in the preview mode, you can see we get the Google Tag Manager console. And as expected, we now have the A-B test modification here. And let's see what kind of data is being pushed into here. So this is actually the information that be, is being pushed to the data layer. Uh, and you can actually see now here that the event action is hero test 0, 0. So this means now that we're in the original variation. And if we refresh this, you can also notice that nothing's changed. We are exactly in the zero, zero variation. So what's happened now is that the script has written a cookie and we can actually go into the console and check if the cookie exists. So we go to cookies and here it is. So we have the hero test cookie and it says value zero. So we can now actually delete this cookie to see if we go into the other variation. So I, I delete it and refresh and let's see. Yep, we're now in the other variation. So if we check the cookies again, you can see we're in the 1.1 variation. So everything's working perfectly. The A-B test is now live on this de debug mode. So we're now in the situation where we have the test running on our website, but the data isn't going anywhere. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna push this data to Google Analytics. So how do you do that? Well, first things we're gonna do is click on the A-B test and check what data is available in the data la layer. So what we actually want to do is we want to extract this event action uh, information and also the event category so we can push that to the Google Analytics. So we're gonna need first to expose these variables to Google Tag Manager. So we head over to variables and we create a new user-defined variable. And this type is actually data layer variable. And here comes then the event category. So you have to type this exactly as it's there. So like that. And we're going to name it DLV event category. So DLV stands for data layer variable. Save that. And we're also going to do an exact same one for the event action. So DLV event action, data layer var variable, and here we are going to say event action. And save these two. So next thing we're going to do is create a tag for this. So click the new button again and uh, choose a tag type. So this is going to be a universal analytics tag. And if you haven't already, it's a really good thing to put your tracking ID as a variable. So the G, I have made a GA ID here already, so I'm gonna make that over here. And then the track type is actually an event. And in category, we'll now put the variables we just created. So it's the DLV event category, and in the action, we're gonna put the event action like this. So that's actually all you need for this event. We're gonna rename this. So this is a A-B test 
So you can do a lot of different settings here, but for this simple A-B test, we just need this, info this information. So let's head over to triggering. So this is now going to need a trigger. So we, we want this to happen when the A-B test event happens. So let's create a new trigger, choose the trigger type. Now this is a custom event. Event name is A-B test. So you have to type it exactly like it's here. So A-B test and all custom events. And let's rename this custom A-B test. So like this, save it. And now we can also save the tag. Let's refresh the workspace and head over to monday.fi to see if the changes actually exist here as well. So do a refresh and then from the A-B test event, we can now find the tags fired on this event is UI A-B test. So just as we wanted, the data is now being pushed to Google Analytics. And we can test this out. We can go to Google Analytics and check if the data is coming here. So from the real time and events, we should now be able to find our A-B test. And here it is. So just as we expected, the data is now here. So based on this data, we can now segment the users and compare the different variations to each other. So we could, for example, compare the bounce rate of these two or how many clicks we have on the buttons and compare if one of the variation has a higher click rate than the other one. But that whole thing will be another video. So awesome. You've now made your first A-B test and you should be really happy. You're going to learn so much by doing A-B tests, I promise you that. Now, if you watched this video this far, please give the video a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. And if you run into concerns or have questions, please leave them below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.